Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be going over the Surefire XC1, this little light right here that you see. This light has been out for about a year now and a lot of folks are choosing it for a concealed carry option. I've had this one in for approximately three months. Definitely done a good bit of shooting with it and what we're going to do today is kind of go over what I found with it so far. Uh, let the dogs take a look at it, do a beam comparison and uh, that should pretty much be it. So right now let's step outside, let the dogs take a look at it and then do those beam comparisons. Here you see the beam outside, so you can see it's a very balanced beam overall. Uh, good spill, but also has good illumination there. My dog's approximately maybe 30 feet away in this picture, and you can see he's illuminated just fine. So how does it compare to like the big boy 500 lumen output uh, Streamlight 300? So there you can see much, much brighter hotspot. And the spill's still pretty bright as well, but the hotspot really is the big difference. You're not going to get a lot of throw out of the XC1. As you can see here, again, we're back to the XC1. Um, and then, again, the Surefire X300. Again, we're looking at the X300, good wide beam. And then we're going to roll in the uh, Enforce APL. Hopefully my camera will focus. You can see this one here has got a little bit of a sort of a whiter tint and does have a hot spot here, which will focus on the dog. Still has a good spill, but a much more defined edge to it. Um, so definitely going to have more sort of throw, less spill. And again, here's the Surefire. Um, very good balanced beam output overall. So you saw the beam pattern out there, and no doubt about it, it does have a wide flood, and it's designed sort of as a close quarters light. Um, Surefire calls it the max vision beam, i.e. illuminating a wide area, giving a good situational awareness. Um, I took it out there and did shoot at night. Unfortunately, I lost the footage somewhere on a hard drive, but I was able to shoot and identify targets out at 50 yards. And uh, beyond that, it was really tough. Uh, it really started to get hard. And I mean, certainly if you knew that there was a threat and someone was shooting at you, sure, you you could identify them, um, but 75 was tough, 100 was pretty much impossible. So that was on a real dark, sort of cold and crisp night for what it's worth. But uh, within 50 meters, that's obviously where most of your shooting engagements are going to happen, really most within 25 meters and even 10 meters. So for that, it's going to do a perfect job as you guys just saw. So some basic specs of it is that it does have a 200 lumen uh, output and it's rated for 1.5 hours now. I tested this flight a good bit and what I found was after about an hour of being on, it starts to dim. Now, one advantage of running on that um, AAA battery, which I guess we'll show you right here, uh, there's your battery compartment right up front. Uh, one advantage of not using, you know, sort of like a rechargeable, um, you know, lithium ion battery or something like that is that you do notice it actually getting dim because it's just a standard AAA. So the battery will start to drain and the output will go down. So you do get an indicator that it is uh, going down. I should also note there it's aluminum there on the battery cover and it is uh, gasket sealed in there. So to prevent water or anything like that from getting in there. But yeah, so after about an hour of use, you're probably going to want to go ahead and replace it when you start seeing it dim a little bit. The body of the light is made out of an anodized aluminum. You can see it has a nice finish all the way around. The scratches on there are just ones that I've put on there. Otherwise, it's uh, good to go there in terms of the finish. All the way around looks good. And it's very lightweight as well. Even with the battery in there, it only weighs 1.6 ounces. If you haven't actually seen one of these in person, it may be hard to appreciate just how small it is. So here you can see a comparison with the uh, Big Brother, the X300U. And it's also fatter as well as longer heavier takes two cr123 batteries of course this is definitely going to give you more output but it's much larger as well so uh, another popular light out there of course is going to be a streamlight tlr1 you can see again a much larger light overall um, just to kind of show you the profile of it as well it's much shorter and of course it's going to be fatter as well because this also takes two cr123s the light that's probably most comparable to the XC1 in terms of size anyway is going to be the Enforce APL that you see here. Of course, the XC1 is still much smaller, uh, both in terms of overall profile width here as well. And then, of course, if you look at how it was mounted on the gun, it's going to be smaller as well there. Speaking of mounting it on a gun, we'll show you how to mount it up here. We have a Glock 19, which is probably going to be the most common gun for this one in terms of carrying it. And you have this little screw here on the side and you just back it out, comes loose in there. And we're just going to slide it in 
And uh, it only has one mount, unlike um, some of the other lights out there that have sort of mounts for different types of rails. And one thing I want to point out on that, I can kind of see if I can get my screwdriver here still on camera. There you go. Um, I have read reports of a couple guns it not fitting well. At least it fits on there, but it won't sort of align with it. And really the number one that I've seen out there is the Walther BPQ. Now, I do not have a Walther BPQ, so I can't test that. But I'm just passing that along to you. I've tested it on a few different guns, though. I know my uh, MMP45 we've had it on, as well as the uh, Grand Power K100. And it works just fine on there. So um, most guns out there, I would say it's going to work just fine on. And even on like the PPQ, the reports aren't that it doesn't work. It's that it doesn't line up with the uh, barrel. It sort of points down. So um, there are plenty of holsters out there available for it as well. We have our uh, Priority One holster here. This is the inside the waistband rig. I actually wrote that XC1 on there. That's not them, but that's just to remind me. But you can see a nice sort of sleek inside the waistband holster. And it goes in there just fine. Uh, they do offer a viewer discount here on the channel, but they make good holsters. You guys have seen them on here before. Definitely do recommend them, especially at the price point that they come in at. Operating the light is pretty straightforward. We have basically two controls, our constant on right here, and then our momentary on on each side of the pistol. Now, uh, for right-handed shooters, of course, you're gonna be activating it with your left thumb here. So you're just gonna push down slightly on it and you'll see the light comes on. Of course, for right-handed shooters as well, you could also use it with your index finger. However, I certainly don't recommend that. And for you lefties out there, uh, you'll have no problem because the activation is exactly the same for the momentary. However, uh, one problem or one issue that you may see with it is that the constant on um, is sort of right-hand friendly, meaning that you can push it across and you're just gonna push that bar straight across and it will stay on for constant on. And to deactivate it, you'd push it across again. Now. One thing I sort of don't like about that is that it's not exactly tactile. Um, of course, visually you can see the light when it's constant on, but uh, it doesn't like click into place or anything like that. And even with the momentary, you feel a good click and you know it's on. But for some reason, at least on mine, example of one anyway, it's not as tactile as I'd like it to be. That should cover most of the details of the light itself. Now, a few things that sort of folks will talk about out there on the internet. Number one, it's very small, very concealable. A lot of people like it, particularly folks that do appendix carry. I personally don't appendix carry. If I'm carrying inside the waistband, it's generally at the four o'clock position. But for folks who do appendix carry, this thing apparently is a godsend. So good on you guys to have a light on your carry gun. That's certainly a good thing. You could use it, of course, for home defense, because for years, a 200 lumen light would have been the most you know, the brightest, most impressive plate out there on the market. And it got the job done back then. Certainly could still do it today. So if you sort of wanted a dual purpose light, it'd be good for that. So some of the cons of it though, uh, the reason I mentioned that I've had this for about three months and it's been out for about a year is that earlier on there was definitely reports of these lights having issues. Now that's relatively rare for Surefire. They tend to be a Surefire solution, if you will zing but um no in all seriousness they have a really good reputation for durability and their products just working and being hassle free however this light definitely like we said had some hiccups when it came out and one thing that people reported a lot was that after a while uh, like if you left it stored or in a carry configuration that the toggles just wouldn't come on um, i did a search over the last like i think year and a half in google and saw tons of reports from about eight months ago back with that issue i did a search and I, you know you can do your query results within the last three months and i didn't see one so hopefully they cured it mine i let it sit for a month in my safe on the gun and then actually just hit it right before we did this video and it worked fine so I don't know if it's 100% cured, what the issue was there, but it seems that Surefire does have it under control, at least from what I've seen anyway in my experience. But uh, the light itself in terms of cost is generally around $200 plus or minus $20, depending on where you look at it, at least in 2016. So not the most expensive light Surefire makes at all, but certainly not a cheap light either there on that front. But one thing that's good is from everything I've heard as well, Surefire is pretty good customer service. So if you did run into an issue, they seem to take care of you. Um, we'll put a link, of course, to this light down below in the video description for folks who want to check it out. But if you guys have any comments or questions or anything like that, you can always post down below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always. But thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. And we'll hope to see you in the next video.